Welcome to the Marie Manucherry podcast. Over the last 30 years, it has been my joy to assist humanity in aligning with their magnificence so they may heal, discover their natural gifts, and communicate with loved ones living on the other side. May you also experience delight while we dance in the powerful, intuitive world of energy. Let's get going. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast where energy meets the divine. Very exciting. And of course, we talk about everything from magic, healing, of course, manifesting, which is really about everything, self-love, self-worth, and truly aligning to your incredible magnificence so that you may thrive and find heartfelt, high vibrational solutions to anything that you wish to resolve in your life or have a different experience with. Everything truly is about perception. And we have something incredibly happening on earth right now. What's actually happening in the sky, but it affects really only earth when you think about it. We're going to have our second eclipse um, in the last couple of weeks. The first one was on March 25th. Um, I can't remember what sign it was in, but I know that this next, I think it was in Libra, but this next eclipse, which is on Monday, I'm recording today, April 3rd, uh, 2024, and the eclipse is on April 8th in the sign of Aries. Eclipses are powerful moments in life. And yes, they really only affect earth uh, because the outer planets that are in activation are circling or connected to earth, the planet that you and I are living on. Eclipses are like a wild card moment in life, meaning that incredible things can happen during eclipse seasons. And we get about four eclipses per year. They come in pairs. So you really want to stay in the observation of incredible eclipse energy, eclipse energy during that precious and wonderful time. So you're in it right now. It was activated even before March 25th, but definitely activated from the lunar eclipse that we had. It was a full moon lunar eclipse on the 25th of March. And now we're moving into a solar, a full solar eclipse that will mostly be seen over the Americas and Mexico. So it's a wild card because during eclipse energy, gateways are opened throughout the cosmos, enormous gateways. That means like doorways or windows of time, of energy have opened up throughout the heavens, throughout earth, throughout the dimensions that surround you, the air around you to bring in exceptional and kind of sacred, even Mm, faded experiences into your reality. It's, it's a time in your life where magic can happen in a very powerful way that affects you forever. These gateways, if you walk through them, if you move through the gateway, they will permanently close behind you. That's a good thing. You want that. When it comes to manifesting and changing and being in a different realm of experience, you've changed your perceptions. You want to have your thinking permanently change. You don't want this back and forth. It's kind of like running your energy low and then high and low and high. It's great when you're in the high vibration, then it sucks when you're in the low frequency. And it, it's very difficult to manifest when you're running your energy high and low, high and low. You want a consistency. You want your vibration to increase over time and to maintain that vibration so you can keep creating in the frequency of that high energy because all the things we want in life exist in high vibrational energy. So during eclipse time, you want to stay aware for aha moments, clarifications, new perceptions, new ways of being, because if you can get curious about those, you're going to find a gateway, you're going to walk through it, and this is all energetically speaking, and then the gateway is going to close sometime after the eclipse has finished. Eclipses shine energy and light into those things that we are unconscious of. And during a successful experience with an eclipse, you gain 
knowledge, you gain awareness, you shift your consciousness, something incredible happens to you that you can't go back to the way you were. This is a good thing. We want that. We want to have a change in our perception. What if you get curious about wealth and you wonder if your relationship with it could improve if you could change your vibration about it, if you could get happy about wealth, if you could you don't even have to know what's going to change, but if you can get curious about it, then you could walk through an energetic opening created by the eclipse energy. They're already open right now. All these portals, openings, windows, gateways, whatever you want to call them, they are open. There's thousands and thousands and thousands, thousands of them surrounding the earth right now, helping us to shift permanently a perception so that we don't have to keep creating in the way that we were so that we can manifest and create in new ways. It's a very powerful time. And this eclipse is unique in, in the fact that we have outer planets that are going through massive change. For example, Pluto, which is a very small, uh, well, it's they don't even think it's a planet anymore, but it still is uh, from an astrological energetic perspective. But it's it's an outer planet. It's very slow moving. And it was in the sign of Capricorn for, a, I think, 15 years, a long period of time. And, and it, it goes slow. The planet goes slow. It has moved into Aquarius. It's going to station direct in Aquarius in November. So Pluto is a, a powerful planet or non-planet, whatever you decide it is for you, because it, it kind of has this underworld energy. It has a a perception that's very deep in quality and very profound and extremely psychic. So when, it's, when it was in the planet of Capricorn, not so much fun, in my opinion. Uh, you can learn a lot. You can learn a significant amount of, of information during that period of time. I think it was from 2008 is when uh, Pluto moved into Capricorn. And it moved into Aquarius last year, but then it retrograded back into Capricorn and it's going to station direct, I believe in November, for 20 some years. So that's how slow it moves. But Aquarius... The sign of Aquarius is about humanitarian perceptions. It's, it's about moving into humanitarian vibrations. So it's a very um, hippie loving vibration. We're actually moving to the Aquarian age for the first time in many, many hundreds, if not thousands of years. So a lot of people thought we were in the Aquarian age in the 60s or in the 70s, but we weren't. We are now authentically moving into the Aquarian age. So a lot of things are going to change in the humanitarian realm of life. It'll be interesting to see how we resolve conflicts in the future. I don't think things are going to change drastically overnight. I, th I think humanity are more like sloths. They're kind of slow in the progression of consciousness. That's why it's incredibly important to focus on your own interworkings of your consciousness rather than waiting for the whole world to change or staying in the suffering of humanity until everyone is uplifted and free. And then you're going to allow yourself to grow. I, I think that is not the way to go. It, it, who knows when it will happen? And you're really here for your own individual happiness. Souls are independent contractors. They're really here for their own individualization. It doesn't mean that you decrease your compassion or your caring or your belief systems. You vote appropriately. You are generous when you can be to organizations that are really truly helping those that are suffering um, based on the human perception of suffering. Like those things are important and critical. Um, and to do it from a joyful place, not from a wounded place, but honoring what souls are learning, but also using your, your generosity when you can to positively affect for moments at a time. Um, so don't wait for the whole world to get its act together because this planet is a planet of contrast and you're in powerful eclipse energy. The amount of awareness and consciousness you can gain now could drastically change your life. And as an older soul type, when your life is drastically changed, the entire universe benefits, but all of humanity will benefit from your growth of consciousness. So during this eclipse time, I like to slow down. Uh, so for example, not that this will make many of you happy when I have clients that cancel, you know, we have a cancellation list and we draw from that often to fill cancellations as quickly as possible. But 
right now during eclipse time, I may not feel some of those cancellations so I can rest more. The energy is very intense, particularly in this eclipse energy. We also have Uranus and Taurus, and there's going to be some incredible conjunction. I'm not an astrologer, by the way. There's going to be an incredible in conjunction with Uranus and Jupiter this month in April that apparently hasn't happened in quite a long time, or maybe never in your lifetime. This could be the first moment that it occurred in your lifetime. So you want to rest. I like to have my, my soul open as if I'm just available to experience something that's going to lead me into higher realms of awareness to get answers. And, and you don't have to have the questions. I don't think it's good to have questions during eclipse time. You don't know what is going to bring you an answer. You don't know what the answers are going to be about. You're not supposed to, they're going to be what's ever in your highest good, wherever things are not eliminated. Cause so it could be very dark in your consciousness. You may not even have an awareness that you need to change your perception about something that the universe is going to give you some highlighted, evidence about to make you go, oh, never doing that again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and then you walk through this gateway with this brand new appreciation for yourself and your realm in the world so that you can permanently change and have a completely different experience. Humans can rebirth themselves in their lifetime, multiple times, just by changing their consciousness and their perception of life. They can eradicate uh, a, a life or parts of their life that they didn't like anymore, that weren't fulfilling, that weren't fun and birth a completely different reality. Each human being can create heaven here on earth for themselves. And that's really what we're meant to do. And that comes through vibration, changes in perception, curiosity, being quiet and loving yourself. So this is an exciting time. And I, you know, so you're in this window. So I like to really be aware uh, as much as possible, which means slow down, take notes, do automatic writing, meditate, nurture myself, sleep in, rest, because the energy is so intense and you want to be present to whatever is in your highest good. It's an exciting time. I, I hope you all benefit enormously. You deserve to. Okay. So as most of you know, that I also answer questions on this podcast. People go to my website, they leave a voicemail. I eventually play it because uh, we have lots of questions and I'm grateful that we do. I eventually play it here and answer it for you. Now, if, if you've left a question, I haven't answered it yet, listen to other people's answers because they are gonna reflect what you need always, every single time. Um, and if you haven't left a question, um, listen to everybody's answers, it will positively affect your life in some way as well. So I'm going to go to what I call the phone lines because I did live radio for about 14 years, but they're really voicemails. I love this formula for um, the podcast because I can hear the questions so well. I, I, I actually feel like I could get into the vibration of the individual a lot easier. Radio is busy, fast, quick, lots of noise and distraction. This, not so much. Okay, here we go. Hi, Marie. Thank you so much for being a great role model for self-love. I mean, it's amazing. I found you recently and whoever, I mean, I've never found a role model. Plenty of people say to love ourselves. In any case, deep thanks. I would love to have a reading um, of my energy. And if anybody shows up on the other side, I, that'd be cool too. My name is Judy and I'm in Texas. You helped me with my son so much. Thank you. Love you. Bye-bye. So sweet. I'm, I'm so glad I helped you with your son. And just so that everybody knows, you know, when I'm doing readings, I'm very present. So I don't remember how I helped you. Or if I made you frustrated or annoyed, I won't remember. Um, even when I have sessions with clients, which is three days a week, I have sessions with clients after I'm done, I won't remember the conversation because I'm channeling information from your spirit guides from the universe, from all of that. Um, and I'm so happy, Judy, that you are liking my perceptions about self-love and self-worth. I think these activities are critical for the evolution of the human species. You know, creation loves us in such a deep and powerful way. 
and we can't really connect to our higher self or even feel the heart align this powerful forceful of energy that's inside of us if we don't have similar vibrational feelings towards ourselves and, and self-love is an emotional experience so i'm glad that it's doing well for you you, you have interesting energy i think you are a hundred times more aware than people know and i really think you need to let your flag shine uh, you know let yourself be seen for who you are you've got a lot of activity in the first layer of your or your org field which is a hologram of all of your anatomy and physiology and complete and total health um and that's my dog charles in the background for people who are watching on youtube and this podcast um so the hologram, your hologram is really, really, really activated, which is something I want to see whenever I look at anyone's energy. It means you're grounded, you're feeling good in life, you're pulling up a lot of beautiful earth energy, your hologram is being fed. And then that hologram tells your true physical form, your anatomy and physiology, what health looks like. That's its job. The hologram um, never changes. So if someone breaks a bone in their physical form, in the hologram, there's no broken bone. If someone has diabetes in their body, there's no diabetes in the hologram. And in order to get the hologram active and to have it send positive, beautiful energy to our physical form, we literally have to be grounded in our body. So deeply grounded so we can pull up earth energy and then, um, that energy from the hologram that is fed by the first chakra, the root chakra, goes to your physical form and reminds you what health looks like. So you're act whatever you're doing in your life right now or whatever you're feeling, because joyful energy can definitely increase people's health. People say to me all the time that I look young for my age, better on video. I have good lighting in here, by the way. Um, and I, when people say, oh, how do you do that? How do you stay so young? And, and I say, because I'm happy. I'm a happy person and, and I, I work at it. To be happy requires devotion to yourself and to know what you want and to then follow through in what's ever in your best interest. Older soul types have been many very wounded in their growth and consciousness and their over compassion for others. And the needle needs to come in the middle where the compassion we have for others is a reflective of the compassion we have from ourselves. So I don't know what you're doing, Judy, but your Hara line looks lovely in your body, this beautiful you know, tube of energy that runs through you. And your uh, first layer of your auric field is quite active. When I look at the rest of your aura, it's not as bright and flashy as I would like it to be. It's definitely extended. So it's about half a city block. The aura, the whole entire aura is meant to extend three city blocks. We want it to be very large because that means it's going to fill up with lots of subatomic particles that, you know, get divided into these layers that positively affect us. And it's a big aspect of landscape of energy that can be really good for the physical form and anything that we're manifesting and creating. Same thing in your chakras. It's not as bright. I can see the chakras. They are good colors. I don't see any leaks going on, but I'd love to see the same sort of brightness and activity that I'm seeing in the first layer of your auric field in all of your chakra system. Again, more bright color and energy moving up from the first chakra, that's great. And then in your auric field. So perhaps you could stop worrying about the world because that's what I'm being told right now. And you could be grateful for the world the way it is exactly the way it is. That's incredibly important for all beings to appreciate what is so that we can manifest what's different. And when I'm talking to someone and I'm reading their energy, as I'm speaking, which is mostly channeling, I'm actually also looking at your energy system and you're starting to uptake your energy system in the way that I would love for it to be by asking you to appreciate the world exactly the way it is right now. You don't have to get into deep, um, awarenesses of all the suffering that's happening in the world, but just love the world the way it is, just exactly the way it is right now. Get into that vibration, that frequency, because it's going to feed your energy system. You're going to get more clarity. It looks lovely. So thank you. Sherry from North Carolina. So as a psychic and medium, how do you tell the difference between 
reading somebody's mental or emotional field around them and actually picking up direct communication from the deceased. Okay, interesting question, Cher, or Sherry, I'm not sure, um, from North Carolina. Love North Carolina, but I, just, I have a, a child that lives there, so of course I love North Carolina. Um, interesting question. I think it's good to be aware of all of those things. One of the first things I do as I'm moving into a reading and I mostly read people I've never seen before unless they are a repeat client and they got on my schedule. Uh, I want to know what this person is feeling first and foremost. Most people don't know what they're feeling. And I mean like 98% of the population, probably 99, have no idea what they're feeling because people listen to their minds and, and the mind is not emotional, but yet it tells us all day long what we're feeling, but it's not accurate information that needs to be ignored. It's not helpful. The mind is just a beautiful logical tool. So I like to know what someone's feeling because that's going to help me help them. Many times when I'm doing a medium session, which is every day, I talk to people who have departed, whether someone has a medium session with me or an energy session, I always read for departed loved ones, always. It's just part of who I am and it actually helps people heal, surprisingly enough. I mean, I find it surprising. So I want to know what the human is really feeling because humans are so stuck in their brain and they're not in alignment. They're not an authentic vibration. I want to know what they're feeling because that's how I'm going to best help them is by helping them authentically. Uh, and, and so I'll know what they're really feeling, but I also can read people's minds. So I know what they're really thinking and I may have a conversation with them eventually because I want individuals to be able to feel and see and hear experience, how, however they intuitively do their departed loved ones. I think that's normal and natural. So if I help people get into alignment with their own authentic energy, what they're really feeling, what they're really thinking, they're going to have a better experience with our session. Number one, they're going to feel their loved one a whole lot better. They're going to I'm going to teach them tools and techniques as I do in every session so that they can actually experience their loved one when I'm not around, which is what everyone deserves. So these things that you're talking about are also critical and important. I think what your question really is, is how do you know if you're projecting your own mind made experiences versus intuition? And really the best way to be in that vibration is you have to get out of your brain rest in the lower half of your body. Like I naturally do this at work. It's something I have to work on in my personal life to get out of my brain and rest in my lower half of my body. It's just something I naturally do when I work. Um, but one of the ways that you could do it is to feel your glute muscles, your feet, allow your energy to be present in the pelvic cavity. A big part of allowing your energy to be in the lower half of your body is that you ask it to move down. It's your energy. It will go wherever you're telling it consciously or unconsciously. So be conscious of your energy and ask it to rest in the lower half of your body. Then you're going to have all the awarenesses that you want, what someone's really feeling, what they're really thinking, and then be able to communicate what the departed loved one is reporting. Departed loved ones will, you know, give information to their family members that their family members desire. But also departed loved ones want to give information that's critically important for the evolution of that person. They really come to help their loved one. They really, really do. So I hope that answers your question. And it's a flow of consciousness, by the way. It's a flow of consciousness. All right. Hi, uh, my name is Renee and I'm calling from Portland, Oregon right now. Um, and my question is about my mother. Um, who has dementia. And what I'm wanting to ask about is what is the, the highest way to support her in her journey right now? Um, her dementia is, is progressing. Um, she's still very with it. And in fact, she's, she's really, um, in a very positive loving space, but also, um, you know, disoriented and confused. And um, yeah, it just seems to be a very challenging place to be. 
And given how prevalent dementia is these days, um, I just wanted to hear your perspectives about it. And um, what is what is the best you know way to to navigate and approach this? Um, she's also in a facility, and and that really is bringing up a lot of um, you know concerns I have around: is this facility the right place for her? Is this the best place? Um, given what's happening. So, um, so that is my question. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Renee. I'm so sorry about your mom's um, dementia. I don't think it's more prevalent than it used than it was previously. I just think people live longer than they have. I mean, my grandparents died in their sixties pretty early in life. So they didn't have the time to actually form um, age-related forms of dementia, but people are living longer and longer these days. So we just see more dementia. Dementia energetically is caused from having a significant part of your life in denial. An example could be someone who stayed in a relationship that they didn't enjoy or like, never left, acted like everything was fine, or someone who worked a career for decades and they hated their job, you know? So there's a lot of people who just ignore their own emotions or ignore other people's behavior and act like everything's fine. And that's not good for the brain. It, these types of activities don't just create dementia. It could create epilepsy or brain tumors and, you know, a, a part of Lou Gehrig's disease, uh, because of the, the, the brain activity with that d- disease aspect. I'm glad that she's happy. My mom has some age-related dementia, and I swear she's the nicest she's ever been to me. It's heaven on earth. I'm thrilled. I'm just so happy. I I don't wish her any form of dementia, but she's just not in her victim consciousness and negative speaking that she used to be, um, at least in her personal life. And uh, yeah, I'm just, it's really fun. I'm enjoying her so much. Try not to correct your mom too much when she's in these confused states. I think that's a mistake a lot of people make is they they want their person to come back to where they were. And that's not going to happen, not in this case. So kind of don't fight it. Um, You know, they're going to be in and out of old memories and confusion and sometimes some paranoia and things of that nature. Um, So Try not to fix it. Just be present with her and enjoy her and have fun with her. And and then she'll have more moments where she's in the present with you and can laugh and giggle and enjoy the present moment. I don't think there's anything wrong with being in facility, especially if dementia is becoming intense. It can be sometimes hard to keep people safe who don't have good memories and um, they can fall and injure themselves. They can leave stoves on and all kinds of challenging things that they really do require a lot more care as their disease process progresses. Not everyone, but certainly a lot of people. So I'm not against a facility where someone is there watching them 24 seven and making sure that they're safe because of the confusion and the, the lack of the present moment that they are encountering, they're at risk for injury, breaking a hip. And now, and then we have someone in a hospital, they're disoriented, they're not happy. They have to stay in bed because they have the fractured hip, they're gonna need surgery. All these things that can actually just go down the rabbit hole that make it worse for individuals um, when they're not watched 24 seven because of their confusion. So those are my thoughts on it. I I think your mother's a lucky person to feel happy at this time in her life. And I hope you two enjoy each other enormously. Like my mom and I are enjoying each other now. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Marie. My name is Jessica and I am in Ohio. I have a question about being an empath um, in terms of absorbing energies from people, but not so much in a positive way. I, um, I've always been someone who just picks up on others' anxieties and angst and anger and just their mood in general. And I wear it in my chest. I feel it um, in such a way that it's affecting me physically. I think at least that's what's affecting me physically. I have heart issues. I have reflux. I have tremors. I have anxiety. I have bladder issues. I have a lot of things that in reflecting, I feel have come from just my overload of 
of anxiety and I don't think it's always my own. Um, I don't necessarily want to switch off being empathetic, but I guess I just wonder how you focus um, it better. I have tinnitus, so the ringing in my ears, I've not found a position of meditating that works. And my brain just seems to be constantly firing thoughts that I can't switch off. So um, how do you calm down uh, that level of absorbing energies, I guess, to, to turn it into a more positive for yourself? Um, if you have time to answer, thank you so much. I appreciate everything that you do. You're welcome, Jessica. That's a really good question. You can shut this off. This is your mind. Your mind. If only humanity would get on board with what's really going on inside of them and feel their own energy, then they're going to have a very different experience. So to be empathetic is an old soul reality. But if you stay in your body for yourself, then you're going to be more aware of your own emotions, your own needs. You're still going to know what other people are thinking or what's going on with them, but you're not going to feel it in your body. That's what happened to me very early on in my career. I would go in a patient's room, lay hands on them, be riddled with pain or you know, terrible feelings or enormous grief, whatever was going on for them. And then I would have to go out of their room, go sit downstairs outside of the cafeteria near the fountain so I could get back to my own energy. And my spirit guides helped train me so I could calibrate my energy to stay with me, to be in my body, no matter what's going on with someone else. So now, uh, thankfully to their training and they're helping me while I trained myself as a healer in a hospital, as a nurse, I will still have the knowingness, I have the concept of what's going on with other people, but it doesn't have to affect me. So you have to raise your vibration higher. That means you have to get happier. I know that it's it's annoying, but it's the truth. And stay out of your heart chakra. I'm probably one of the few spiritualists on the planet that ask people to leave their heart chakra alone. The heart chakra, which is where you're feeling everything, is supposed to be neutral when you are over empathetically feeling others, you're not neutral. You're not in universal love. You're in a wounded energy, projecting even your own insecurities onto others and actually misreading people, quite frankly. So stay in the lower half of your body. Start to manage your mind. I've I've said this many, many times, but I think people should treat their brain like dogs. Charles happens to be sitting on my right-hand side in a chair in the sunlight, taking a little snooze while I work. Charles requires quite a bit of management. He also requires positive um, direction. Leave it. Good boy. Um, I once had an an animal intuitive that I was interviewing to see if I wanted to refer clients to her, which I did. She's on my website, by the way, Amber. And she said to me that uh, when she first read Charles, he just kept saying, I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. And she goes, do you ever tell him he's a good boy? And I'm like, no, not really. And then after that session, I'm like, that's all I say to Charles. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Uh, so you need to treat yourself with kindness and compassion and constant positive uh, phrases and internal dialogue. That's how you manage the human mind. Because the human mind is only supposed to be working when we're doing logical things. Period. Period. Like I'm keeping my um, eye on the clock because I actually have something else I have to do after I'm done with this podcast. I'm watching the clock to make sure that I'm in alignment. So yes, you can get out of this. All of these things are from you running your energy in the sympathetic aspect of your neurological system. That's what this is from. It's nobody else's fault. It's not about reading other people. You need to learn to be in your body for yourself, manage your mind. You're ready for this. You're beyond ready. The the universe just told me you're five years behind the eight ball. So that means consciously you were ready five years ago to develop these concepts and to train yourself and to manage your mind so that you could step more authentically into your beautiful, amazing, powerful self and have a completely different experience from reality and not let your body be reactive to the um, increase of the fight or flight response, which is what's happening. You keep stepping into fight or flight. Great, 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 great question. Try to rest in the lower half of your body. Feel your feet, feel your glute muscles, 
wonder how you are, always get back into your body for you. When you feel like you're worrying for about others, stop, be kind to yourself, say, leave it. Good job. I love you to yourself so that you can move back into alignment. Great question, by the way. Hello, Marie. I'm William from San Antonio, Texas. I wanted to ask you a question about, I'm at a change point in life. I left a relationship long-term of 20 years as I felt I was uh, being dragged down energetically. I've been a seeker and a student of personal development most of my life. I have had the privilege of studying and being around many good teachers and I'm always told that I'm here to be doing big things. In this year of change, I've been quite lonely. Most all of my relatives are gone and departed, and I've had some signs and communication from the other side, and yet I still feel a bit lost and alone. I've also had two health things pop up in the last year. One is vertigo and tinnitus in my right ear. And another one is my digestion. I just often wonder if I really am destined for large change and big change. I'm in my early 60s and I question whether I'm just fooling myself with all my seeking and my uh, reading and sitting next to teachers. I I have a meditation program. I go to a network spinal chiropractor. Um, I listen to intuitives and other guide spiritual teachers across the United States and the world. And I tend to be embraced by them. And I'm always told by people that have that extra sense that I have those gifts and healing things within me. I, I can see it. I can feel it. I just don't know how to get there. I'd love any feedback you have for me. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, William. So the tinnitus and the vertigo is from the third eye. And this is from you not using your intuition in your personal life, which is critical and really, 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 really important. So I kind of feel like you need to stop following all the gurus in your life. And you get to make your own choices and decisions and start listening to the guru within you. Everyone is incredible and amazing. And if other people notice this within you, you need to spend time with yourself and listen to yourself and let your own beauty come through uh, so that you can manifest the things that you're desiring. Loneliness is really about not having a relationship with oneself. Kind of going back to the same topic here regarding you. You need to spend time with you. You need to be curious about you. it's, It's an internal experience. Even as a psychic, when I'm reading energy, I'm not projecting my energy out to go find you in, I think it was um, Texas, you said, I believe. I'm actually in my body, feeling myself, very present, very aware of myself. That's what gives us the gateway into reading energy. Psychics and intuitives read from their own perception. In fact, the more you're in your body, the more you know yourself, the more you're curious about yourself, yourself, the more intuitive one becomes. So that's your homework. Stop listening to everyone else. Maybe pick a few favorites and start listening to yourself. I'm sure there's a wealth of knowledge and information in there, but you have to be present so it can unfold. I hope this is helpful. Thank you. Hi, Marie. This is Jeanette from Corning, New York. Next Level Soul is where I came across your wonderfulness. My question, can you or your guides please express to me whatever is in my highest good information concerning my strongest intuitive gift or talent so that I may grow it more to support the collective and if there is any aura energy work I need to do to strengthen my energy field. Thank you very, very much. Uh, You're welcome, Jeanette. Yeah, and uh, Alex Rauer is lovely. And I think that's where a lot of people heard um, his first interview he did with me. Uh, He did a great job with that interview. I really liked it. You have all the clairs. So you're clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient. That's that's lovely. That's amazing. But you're trying to translate your intuition with your brain. You have to leave the brain alone. You have to let go. You have to get out of the way. Intuition and the logical mind will never match up. Ever, ever, ever. In fact, 
What helps intuitives know that they're on the right track is their brain is saying something different than what their intuition is. That's how I know in my personal life, because it's, you know, I can't speak for all intuitives, but it's just more um, challenging to actually read oneself than even a complete stranger. So when I'm reading myself or my life, or I'm asking intuitive questions about my personal experience, I'm also noticing how my brain's reacting. Because if my brain is in disagreement, I know I'm on the right track. I know this with every ounce of my soul that I'm on the right track. If my brain's agreeing, then I know that I'm listening to my brain. I'm not paying attention to it attention to intuition. So you literally cannot let your mind translate intuition. Intuition is translated through how something feels. So for example, and I I may have used this one before, I'll, I'll try to be more original or bring some firsthand knowledge. My mind thinks that purple is a stupid color. My brain doesn't like it. It thinks it's too woo woo. I don't like it from a mental perspective. That's because if I'm reading it logically, I'm going to have a negative response actually. But from an intuitive perspective, that means when I let go of my brain and resting in the lower half of my body, I think purple is cool. I think it's interesting. I think it's beautiful. In fact, some of the most cool things that I have, like this beautiful amethyst crystal, and there's a beautiful fluorite Buddha behind me, like one of a very precious, um, precious stone that I have in here are purple. So learn, you have to practice this, learn to read energy and you have all the clairs. So you don't have to figure it out. If you're clairvoyant, clear audience, clear sentient, you have all the clairs. And when people really develop their intuition, they move into all the clairs. They might have one that's more prominent, um, but they have all the clairs. And um, the intuition is a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. So if you could start to allow yourself to not listen to your mind. It will not translate knowledge. It can't intuitive knowledge, which is a thousand times more accurate than logic. Then you're going to be on the right track. I hope that's helpful. Great question. I enjoyed that one. Hi, Marie. My name is Diane. I'm from Indiana. I'm a first time caller. I've been interested in all things spiritual since I was a kid. I encourage help from my guides, God, etc., but I don't seem to get any answers. Recently, I've had numerous serious health issues, especially with my hips that I don't understand because I take care of myself. I love mowing grass, bush hogging, caring for my animals and walking my dog through my gorgeous woods. Could you give me some guidance about my health? And if I have guides, what are their suggestions? Thank you. You're welcome, Diane. I'm so sorry that your hips are hurting you. That's absolutely no fun. Hips are about when there's problems, not moving forward in your life. And people who do this, who have hip issues are typically very stubborn because we're talking about bones, the strongest part of the body and joints and cartilage and ligaments and tendons, but the bones are so strong. So there's things that you aren't letting go of so that you can move forward. You're not good at letting go from my perception. That would be a great what if question for you. What if I surrender? What if I get out of the way? And you're trying to figure out what's next when you're not going to know the how, what, why of it. You just have to start feeling that amazing things have happened to you. Your life is beautiful beyond all the work that you do on the property, which you don't have a lot of time to navigate and investigate other things when you're so busy with the property. So that it could be part of what you're supposed to let go of is this heavy work. Uh, I don't have as much property as you do, but I love to garden for, I don't know how long, I'm, you know, it's probably since my twenties. So, you know, a very long period of time, but a few years back, I realized it was taking up a legitimate piece of my time, you know, pulling up sod, you know, dishing out yards and yards of soil and, you know, and mulch and, you know, planting trees, all these things that I love. I realize I don't love it that much. So now I hire people to do those things for me. And then I can plant oodles of flowers around my property, which is something I really, really love and do other things. So I want you to really sit 
in the lower half of your body. Do not, this is like a broken record here. Do not listen to your brain. Your brain does not know it's in your best interest. Your brain doesn't know exactly what you want. So your guides are telling you that you need to surrender, get out of the way and let go so that you can move forward. And I would do some near infrared red light therapy. I, I mentioned it a lot in the podcast. I am not paid by any company, um, Platin Therapy or Red Rush. I think Platin Therapy is really a, a more superior product. They are definitely more expensive these days than they were when I originally purchased my panels, but that could help your hips enormously. Um, if it goes right into the bone and takes care of all kinds of joint issues, all kinds of joint issues. So that's what I would recommend. Let go and get curious. I hope that's helpful. Hi, Marie. I recently came across your podcast recently, and I am loving it. Um, I have a couple of questions. First, I'm wondering um, what you pick up energetically from me um, and just whatever insights you have um, that you can share with me. I would love to hear. Um, <clears throat> also, if I am on the right work, if I'm on the right path regarding my career, um, or if you see my soul or higher self wanting to do something different. Thirdly, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just wondering if when it comes to dreams, I've been actually able to communicate with a couple of past loved ones in my dreams. And I always have extremely vivid, uh, <laughs> really detailed dreams that I remember every night. Um, and there's a couple of people from my past that frequently show up in my dreams. And I'm wondering, um, I don't have any contact with them anymore. And our human form, um, the connections are just gone and we've all moved on, but they're constantly reoccurring in my dreams. And I'm wondering, are we hanging out on a soul level, like in the astral plane or in, in, in a way that we just can't connect here, um, in the earth realm? Are we, or, or is it just, they pop up in my dreams because I know them from my past and it means nothing. I'd be really curious to hear your thoughts when it comes to my dreams in general. And um, also wild animals show up quite frequently in my dreams. Uh, lions, tigers. Um, I just had a giraffe with lions and tigers pop up last night in my dreams. Um, it just seems to be a reoccurring theme. Um, would love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, thank you so much. I know this was a little bit long. And if you can't get to all three of my questions, um, I completely understand and just appreciate any insight you have in general. Thank you so much. I uh, can't wait to hear your next show. Thank you, Corey. And yeah, I'm only going to answer one question because uh, then I can get through more questions. And of course, I do many, many other things besides the podcast. So dreams overall for the majority of the human race are where we do psychology or inner work. And what you want to do to understand your dreams is when you wake up you know, and you remember them, which is amazing, write them down and ask yourself how you felt in the dream, not how you felt when you woke up, because that's then you're in this different sort of human reality, you know, versus when you're in your dream state, a lot of your energy is in the heavens getting recharged. So many, many dreams that the majority of the population have are about internal psychic or I should say psychological healing that we're not allowing ourselves to experience when we're awake. So dreaming can be very healing. Uh, so the reason why you're having these experiences from these people that are no longer in life has nothing to do with them, has everything to do with some personal psychological work that you need to do. So that's why when you're done with a dream and you wake up, ask yourself how you felt in the dream, not about how you feel when you wake up, that's critical. Um, I would pay attention to the animal world when you are awake, since you get such extraordinary totems in your dream state. I certainly do. I pay attention to whatever's in my, you know, waking life because I love animals too so much. I don't have, I don't remember my dreams unless they're, um, projecting, uh, predicting future events. Then I remember them quite well, which I don't have those every day. So like if I were to see a bunch of ants, you know, two days in a row, I go, oh, what is the meaning of ants? I love the Animal Speak book uh, by, I can't remember his name right now, um, Ted, Ted something, but he's great, uh, Animal Speak. I would look up 
any form of animals that you run into and read about the totem. And that information is for you in that moment for that day or something that you're going through. Um, and I think it's lovely that you have interaction with people who've crossed over. Those are true interactions. When we go to sleep at night, our energy goes off to the heavens. The majority of that, especially if we have REM sleep, goes off into the heavens where it's rejuvenated. And people on this other side know that we are you know, ready for communication. So they just step over to our energy. They don't really come into our bodies or our mind. They just step over to our energy and start to have a connection with us and share important experiences. So that's beautiful and wonderful what you're experiencing. But my, my thought is, is that you have some anxiety that you don't always finish working through personal details for you. You don't check in on yourself. And so you're having these very vivid dreams while you're working on it while you're sleeping. That's what I think. I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Hello, Marie. My name is Pam and I live in Boston. And I'd like you to tell me more about a couple of experiences I've had recently um, where I'm currently, well, I've had been having difficulties with my husband. We were separated for a while. Um, we're sort of back together now and kind of working on things. And Things seem as if they could go into a positive direction. But I went to a medium who told me that um, my grandmother was telling me that um, I should just basically um, divorce because I'd outgrown my husband and that he wasn't reliable. And so there are parts of that that sort of resonate, but then there are other parts that don't. And I'm really confused because there were so many things that the medium said that did seem correct in terms of what my grandmother is like <laughs> and um, what she would have even words that she would have used but on the other hand um, I kind of feel like there's still some potential with my husband that he's um, trying really hard that um, we've gone on a couple's retreat and I do see some changes and I feel like perhaps it's best to kind of stick with um, someone where there could be more deep profound growth and, instead of trying to just throw everything out and start with someone new and then kind of end up in the same place anyway eventually because we've been together for 30 years. So that's my main question. Um, and my second question is just in terms of developing my own um, psychic abilities because I read tarot cards, I'm sort of interested mm -hmm. in this stuff, if there's anything in particular that you think would really enhance my growth and abilities um, outside of meditation and the usual things. And that's it. So thank you so much for your show. Oh, you're welcome, Pam. I love doing podcasts. I'm, I'm thinking of doing two a week. So uh, hopefully I'll find some time in my schedule to record twice a week. You're just going to have to like your husband the way he is. Stop trying to fix him. If there's things that you like about him, like the sex is good, you like to travel with him, that you have good conversations or fun, just stop with this internal personal growth that you want him to have. He is not going to do it. He's a younger soul than you. You're an older soul. He's like a medium soul. I almost think that medium souls are more difficult, although young souls are very difficult because they have other issues. Like younger souls might be dishonest or there's a lot of narcissistic energy in younger soul types. Um, but medium souls tend to, they think they know it all when they don't. <laughs> they're not old souls yet, but they think they are because they've had so much progress and they're soul growth realization that they think they know everything. So they're not easily shifted or changed. But I, if you want this relationship to continue, which you certainly could, I doubt your grandmother told you to get a divorce. Dead people don't tell us what to do. Typically they may make a poetic, loving suggestion that's very neutral, but the universe believes in free will. It's the strongest law in the universe. I would tell you if I think you need to get a divorce. Um, I just don't think you will. So I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it because I don't think you're going to get a divorce. So when I feel that, then my job is how do I help someone and their decision making so that they can have a more fulfilled life? Stop trying to change him. Get relationships with other people, girlfriends or whatnot, unless you guys decide to have an open marriage, which is also a potential, I mean, he wouldn't, I don't know, he might like it. I have no idea. <laughs> um, 
that, that that could be a potential, you know, option, but just be fulfilled with other people in your life who share your spiritual beliefs and all of that and stop trying to make him something that he's not and he doesn't want to be. It's a complete waste of your time, complete waste of your energy. He might even grow a little bit because you are, what's happened is you've, you have an ideal of, of his potential and you see him as his potential, but he's not that. And he's really far away from his potential. I'm like super far away from his potential. He's not going to reach that potential in this lifetime, not even close. So you need to get comfortable with that. And if he checks off a, an enormous amount of your boxes, which I hope he does, sex is great. Conversation is great. You laugh, you have fun. Um, you feel safe with him, secure, you trust him. I don't know what, what they all could be, but the spiritual growth and depth of him is not going to happen in this lifetime. And that's from, you know, uh, that's my intuitive read on this, by the way. So that's what I recommend. And um, I know I'm answering two questions for you. My rule is one. I love, I think it's called Mini Pond Tarot. Uh, I like that reader on YouTube. And I love the way he looks at the tarot cards. He actually describes what's happening in the background I think his name is Chris. Yes, he's really, really good. That would be fun for you to look at because uh, you have great gifts and great abilities and great talents. I'm, when I'm talking to you, I can see one of my favorite tarot readers on the planet who's now retired, so sad. And, uh, and that she's really good. So I know that you're very good. I just think that there's ways that you could describe your experience to your clients that you're not utilizing where they can see even more how gifted and talented you are. So those are my thoughts. I hope they make you happy. Thank you. Hi, Marie. My name is Jessica. I am a new listener, um, but I'm so excited to have found you because I feel like um, you're just everything that I've been looking for. So thank you for that. Um, and I have kind of a two-part question for you. The first part is about myself and if I'm an intuitive. I feel like I am. I've had things happen in my life, but I've never actually remember seeing or talking to someone. I've been told that when I was a small child, I used to have conversations. Um, but it's something that I really want to hone in on. And I know meditation and raising my vibration will help. But I'm just curious if, if you can tell me if you know if I have any special gifts, if you will. Um, also, the second part to that is my grandmother, um, I believe that she had, you know, some, some intuitive um, gifts as well. Um, and I've heard that that can be passed down. So I'm curious about that. But really with my grandmother, she and I were very close. She passed away um, several years ago. And once she passed away, I was really upset about some things that I had found out. And I'm just curious. I'm sure she knows I'm upset with her. Um, I want to move past it. But I'm curious what that looks like to her on the other side. Um, knowing my emotion, knowing the anger that I have towards her and if she's accepting of that, if she is angry with me, what that relationship is really like. So if you have any insight that could help me understand, um, my situation and, and kind of how I'm feeling and how she might be feeling for lack of a better word, I'd really appreciate it. Um, again, thank you so, so much, um, for being here. I'm very excited to dive in and get to learn more about what you have to teach us. Uh, thank you, Jessica. I love to teach. It really, I think it's my calling because even in private sessions, I teach, 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 teach. So your grandmother doesn't give a you know what about what you feel. She says it's not about you, that you need to let go, um, that she got to make her own decisions about her life. It's something personal, regardless of what you think, but she just doesn't care. A lot of people, when they cross over, they don't care about things. I remember once I had my hands on a client when I used to see people in person in this room, I used to have a massage table versus a mic and lights and a laptop. <laughs> and I had my hands on someone and they were telling me they were very upset because they, their grandmother had promised them a particular diamond ring and it went to a cousin instead. And she was very upset and wanted the diamond ring and, and wanted to know why this happened. And the grandmother said, I don't really care where that diamond ring is. People who cross don't care about material possessions anymore. They don't, they don't have the same emotional complexity of the human unhealthy reality. They just don't care about things. So regardless of the topic, she doesn't care what you think about it. She doesn't care that you're angry. She just doesn't care. It's, it's not important to her. She thinks it's a waste of your time to spend any amount of energy on this topic. So 
do what you want with that information. Uh, people who um, are born to family members who have known psychic gifts, that means they wanted it in their DNA, that they hope to use that psychic gift in their life personally and or professionally. Uh, so if you know people in your family line that have been known to be psychic, my grandmother and my great grandmother, on my mother's side, um, her mom and her dad's mom, yes, um, both had known psychic abilities. In fact, when I opened up, that means when I realized something that I already had for myself, my uncles on my mother's side called me and asked me intuitive questions. They did not like my answers, but um, <laughs> there you are. So I'm only going to answer those two questions for you. You have great intuition. It's lovely. Okay. And I'm running out of time. I have to get ready and go teach a class, everyone, which by the way, today is April 3rd, 2024. I do have some classes coming up in a couple of weeks. Please go to energyintuitive.com so you can find out about them. They're eight week courses. One about one is about vibration and manifesting, uh, you know, energetically, really knowing energy so you can manifest what you want. And the other one's about the journey of soul. So talking about past lives and the lower world, um, the Kashic records, all of these beautiful things about uh, the journey of souls. So if you want to take them, go to energyintuitive.com. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.